people will sit here and think, do females think like males? Like, do I just want to get it and quit it? Yes, yes I do. Exactly. Sometimes I don't want to sleep over your house and oh, lay up with you. Oh, Boy, oh. no, that's not what I want to do. Oh, I'm in my own bed. bed. Okay. You feel me? Like, no, nah, I want to come home. You have to get one. Yes. Give it to me and I'm gone. I read I read one time, right? I'm o I'm always the friend that says, I read one time. <laughs> <laughs> Just wanna open that up for y'all. I should have said that before we started filming, but I read that women produce like some type of chemical when they have sex. So with that being said, just playing devil's advocate, because everybody's on the same page. Um, with that being said, do you guys think that if you have sex with someone that you don't really have feelings for do you do you still think that there could be some type of something that comes out of it from you so in me have i give off the fact that i give a fuck but i don't mm. um, that's what oh. you're saying yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, okay yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah i probably yeah. do do that. so women have this do. thing where we're like <laughs> oh we we love you we care about you like it come i think that's that comes from having sex okay that's and it doesn't have to be with a certain person it just that's period I don't think niggas really get anything from having sex with 10,000 girls, but we do. <laughs> we're going to be more nurturing, more loving. Mm -hmm. We're, we're going to be mothers maybe one day or like someone's going to look at us as a mother or they're going to come to us because we care. Mm -hmm. That comes from fucking. According to this article that I read. I'm Yes, good morning. Um, I just have a quick announcement to make. I'm gonna just make this really short. This is my motherfucking body. So whatever I choose to do with it is my business. I'm a sole owner. So mind your business. Today I have in the building with me, the Hood Rat Feminist. Hood Rat Feminist. Today's guest, Hood Rat Feminist. See a fairy thought mother reporting to you live from my sick bed. Like if you wanna fuck 20, 30 niggas and bitches, go ahead. Let that ho ho. Me and my best friend would stay up all night just bonding over our ain't shit niggas. I'm ready to bond with my bitches over bankrolls and business ventures. The black women aren't given enough space to talk about our pain. We aren't even given space to talk about our joy, so we have to be that for each other. I just knew her nigga was fine and dick was too bomb, but that was not my dick. We gotta be hitting niggas with the peanut all summer. Tell a nigga to hop off and you'll hit him when you want him. How you gonna let somebody else touch it and you don't touch it? Girl, go ahead and pet that pussy. I really feel that Hood Rat Feminist is a space that's becoming a vestibule for black women, young black women who grew up in the hood who don't have access to the bell hooks and the Audre Lords. People see it as just like, oh, this girl posting her titties. No, I know what's more behind it and I had to go on the show to explain why. I call myself a Hood Rat because I'm from East Orange, New Jersey and I love my hood more than anything. And um, feminism, I, I was introduced to feminism when I got to college. Um, I experienced so many things when I was younger that were normalized and I didn't realize that they were traumatic experiences until I was introduced to feminism and I realized that so many young girls around me were experiencing the same thing. We end up at this apartment in the cut. I was like, yes, this is risky. I put myself in a potentially violent situation, an uncomfortable situation because my self-esteem was in the basement. Self-love is a real uphill battle that you have to fight by yourself. And niggas love to have us insecure and crazy so they could be mediocre and still be in control. Is he going to please you? Is he going to feed you? Is he going to put gas in your motherfucking car? Don't, don't go. Take care of yourself. You're number one. For people who don't know me, I am Tasneem Nathari, a.k.a. Hood Rat Feminist. Hood Rat Feminist just started on Instagram. At the time, I was in a Woman is Black Feminist theater course, and I started to see my neighborhood through this new feminist lens or this new academic lens, but I wanted to include the people in my neighborhood. So I started this online platform where I would make videos, and the common denominator was like where I lived and the experiences that were happening around me that were so different from other people who were at this PWI, this expensive ass institution. I think that people in my neighborhood are much more knowledgeable 
than people like to give them credit for. We may not have the same language that they have, but I was learning so much stuff and I was like, wait, my grandmother used to say something like that. And she may not put the word intersectionality on it, but if we talk about being black and being a woman, that's all they taught me about. And so I understand how to fit in in a lot of different places. And so when I started making these videos on Instagram, I was like, yo, I know that if I put it this way, I was able to get people to listen to me faster because I was known as somebody who was in college. I was known as somebody who was like studying. So I was making people listen to me and I was putting it like right in their faces. I will be doing the first Hood Rat Feminist film this summer. Summer 17 is going down and I need you. We'll be discussing how Black women are introduced to love and sex. So if you identify as a Black woman, hit me in the DM with a little bit about why you feel like you'll be a good addition to the conversation. I just wanted to start this conversation. From Her Rap Feminist to Mommy Never Told Me, I said, yo, it isn't okay that all of these women can relate to what I'm saying. It isn't okay that this is a normal thing. And we are, right now, we're bonding over trauma. And I just thought that it would be better to bond over healing. My mother went through a lot of these things. And it took me being in the situations for my mother to reveal that she was once in the same situations rather than talking to me beforehand. I, I really want to say that so many of the stories were so important and of course we couldn't use everyone and we wanted to have different perspectives. But we have food and these women did not know each other before they, some of them knew each other but most of them did not know each other and they clicked like they knew each other. Um, they were sitting outside on my porch as we were getting ready to film and they were just talking to each other. And I rarely see that in our age group because we're so used to, you know, being on our phones, passing time. But they, you know, they weren't on their phones. They were just talking to each other. So I already felt that the day was going to start off positively. So I want to start with sex. I think that, you know, the conversation we were having on the porch, it's kind of like, continuing that, I want that same kind of energy. Everybody feel free to talk. I, I want to start with like, how were you introduced to sex? Talk about your virginity. When you lost your virginity, did you make that decision solely yourself? Do you feel mm. like that decision was your own? Were mm. you happy about the decision after you made it? Well. Wow. <laughs> sex expert. <laughs> Right. I am trying to learn more about this topic, but I feel like I am very well versed in quite a few things. So I am very, very, very Christian. My family is very strict. You see my tattoos and my vibes and everything. This is not at all how anybody around me taught me how to be. So in every sense of the word, I was sheltered from anything that had to do with sex. So when I first was introduced to it, it was a curiosity of such proportions that that's probably why I'm like so freaking good at whatever the freak I do. <laughs> but. <laughs> okay. Okay. So we'll just put that there as well. But um, my I really was just raised to not show anything, not want to be sexual at all. I, I feel like if my parents expressed it to me even a little bit, slightly, I wouldn't have hit the ground the way I did. I feel like they tried to keep everything away from me, so I went looking for it. I went looking for every single thing that they did not want me to find. And then I found it and I enjoyed it and I perfected it. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> like, you feel me? Like, it's just like, I'm sorry that y'all didn't, y'all should have probably told me. Maybe I wouldn't be, I don't know. I'd probably still be me. <laughs> so, my sexual experience is very interesting because I lost my virginity at age 14. So, I'm 23. I lost it at 14. Um, I had a boyfriend for what well, we were dating for like what nine months before we did it so i went from charter school to public school and i was a little stick 
Then I don't know what happened. Maybe I fell in love with six piece hot wings and fries, but <laughs> these hips came out of nowhere. And my mother was like, Are you fucking? Are you fucking? Like, what is going on? And I'm like, Uh, no, I'm eating. I'm eating a lot, actually. Um, you should probably stop me, but no one's stopping me. And um, my dad, my mom and dad were together. So he would see me and then he would argue with my mom, like, Why is she looking like this? Where is she getting all these hips from? What's going on? What's going on with her hormones? Is she fucking? And I'm like, now I'm interested to know why would that happen. So my mom was always like, never want to talk about it. She was like, uh, like even to this day, she'll be like, uh, don't, don't talk about it. Uh, you're, you're my baby. No. So where did I go? My ratchet ass cousins in the South Water North. <laughs> so educate me, please. Tell me, what, what do I need to know? They're like, all right, well, you need to do this, this, this. Giving me all the steps to learn how to pop pussy on a handstand and shit. I don't know what to do. I'm like, what? I'm what? You need me to do what? Oh, this is gonna be great. It's gonna be wonderful. So in the summer, my mom was at home and he came over and it was not great. It was like what? Like it ate me out. I was like, what? What's going on? And, and then we did it and I was just like, Al, I don't, I don't think I wanna do this anymore. So we didn't have sex after that for a while. And then I was like, I want to do it again, but me being my perfectionist Virgo, so I needed to be what I expected to be. So we went from having sex all throughout my house. Sorry, mom, you're going to see this later. And uh, <laughs> having sex outside, at the beach, the park, mall bathroom. I was I was just trying to like, maybe it would be fun if I do it there or do it there. And I felt like it was just like, because... I had so much high expectations, I never reached them. Mm -hmm. So then I started having sex with girls, I started having sex with other guys, and yeah. I feel like with sex, like the way that I learned about it, it was just like, I was kind of alone in trying to understand it, and maybe if I might have been like taught, maybe by my mom or my grandma, I wouldn't be always thinking about it. Or maybe I would, because sex is great, actually. Yeah. Sex, is great. Like, sex is actually fun. Yeah. But, but they try to keep us away from sex so that we don't get into it. And then, like, they That's what they're told, you feel me? Like they're told that they don't talk to us about it right. so that we, we it doesn't spark our curiosity. But I feel like... But how? When you tell somebody, Not don't touch, touch, touch them. them. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to try uh, to I wanna see. I want to know why I can't touch it. How they can touch it with something else. Right. right. <laughs> you feel me? It's going to happen. So in that aspect, I've had, you know, the women in my life try to keep mm -hmm. that away. And I'd be like, I wish you would have just said something. I wouldn't have. Mm -hmm. Like, if my mom would have been like, you're not going to like it the first time, I would have right. waited longer. Like, right. seriously. Right. 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 But my cousins, who are well experienced, are like, oh, girl, it's going to be great. Yeah, that's because you fucking with fucking Ray Ray, who look good as hell. He's a grown ass nigga. I keep all these muscles, and I got this skinny ass 14 year old trying to have sex with me. Like, yeah. If I was getting piped up by something like that, maybe it would have been great. Right. Like, I wasn't. Okay. Right. So, mine was actually a little different. I wasn't really sheltered from sex. Like, I lived in Jamaica for the first seven years of my life. So, it's kind of just in the culture. Like, it's mm -hmm. everywhere. And I've seen, like, my aunt have sex, my grandma. I've never actually seen my mom, thank God. Um, Your grandma? I don't, yeah. 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 Like, you can't just yeah. skate yeah. over yeah. that. Yeah. I can't skate over that grandma. She's she's right. Right. What's the house? So me, I'm a curious ah. person, so I'm hearing things. Like, I'm going to go look to see what it is. Like, even thinking about it now, I still have the image in my head. Oh, but, no. Um, oh, no. Like, even <laughs> in, when I actually moved to the U.S. to live with my dad, like, I remember one night just waking up, just hearing sounds and... You know, like he was doing his thing. So it was always something that I knew I just didn't understand it. And we never really spoke about it. Like till this day, I never actually had like that sex talk with my dad, never had it with my mom. And I kind of just had to learn about what sex was like doing it myself or like I had my little friends, we would talk about it. So <laughs> eighth grade came around and I had this little school boyfriend, like it was just in school, we were talking stuff. And he's telling me like, oh yeah, like I already lost my virginity, blah, blah, blah. Like, don't worry, like I'm not gonna pressure you, but just know I already lost it. So I'm like, okay, well, but I'm cool. Gonna pressure you. Right. right, like, but, I no, he actually, he actually did, he actually did. Like eighth grade ended and then we broke up over the 
dumbest thing. Literally, he was like, it's over. And I was like, okay, well, whatever. <laughs> and then during that summer, I started working in Harlem with my aunt. And I met this guy that I had, like, a huge crush on. I thought he was the greatest thing I ever saw. And he, I remember he told me he was 17. Turns out he was actually 18. And I was 13 at the time. So he's like talking to me like, oh my God, like you're so cute. Like telling me all these things like that sound good to me. And then he started talking to me about sex. He's like, oh, have you ever done this? Have you ever done that? So I'm like, well, no, but I want to. Like, <laughs> no, but we should try. So um, one day he took me to, I think it was his aunt's apartment. Yeah, he took me there, but we didn't even go in her apartment. Like he took me to the bathroom and I was just like, okay well is this how it goes down like i didn't know what to expect so i was just like all right well whatever so we're in the back and then he's there just like he literally had to tell me like oh do this do that because i didn't know what to do like it's always been around me but i didn't understand it mm -hmm. so that happened and then i remember after i left and i was coming back to jersey to come home it was just like well that was it like i I didn't know what to expect. I didn't have that whole, like, oh, it's going to be great. It's going to be super romantic. I didn't have, like, any expectations or anything like that. But afterwards, it was just like, oh, well, I guess that was it. And, and I ended up not having sex again for a year after that just because it wasn't anything to me. Like, I didn't, I wasn't excited to try it again. Nothing like that. And I never spoke to the guy after that. But I don't think I regret it just because... I don't think I regret it. Maybe now I would have like waited till I really understood what it was. Mm -hmm. Really actually wanted to do it. Oh, because I skipped this part also. The main reason why I ended up doing it was because I knew I was going into high school. And at the time I was watching like a lot of the grassy, like I had friends. Yeah. 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 whatever it takes. Just having sex. <laughs> I, was, I think I was traumatized with sex. Um, when I was a kid, I had, I told you guys outside that I had a lot of brothers. I have five brothers. Um, and I think, you know, they were always very nurturing. Like my brothers were always, they're all, I'm the youngest. So they were always nurturing. And I think because I had them around me, I didn't need men in, in my space. Mm -hmm. Right. I had my brothers, I, my dad was home. My mom and my dad was together for like. 35 years or something like that and I think that it was an advantage to me but you know my older cousin she watched me sometimes and she had niggas over and stuff was going down because <laughs> she was like a, like 18 so she was doing shit and I heard some like one time she was watching me and I heard set like screaming sounds in the room and I was like petrified I'm like banging on the door like I'm thinking that he's like Killing her or something. <laughs> like, <laughs> now I know he was. He was. <laughs> At the time, I was like, what the fuck is going on? Like, I'm banging the door, like, trying to get in. And then when they were done, he came out. He, like, relaxed. Like, told me to relax. And she was, like, on the bed. And, and I was, like, traumatized. I felt like... I'm never doing that. Like, she was having sex. Like, ew, like, what was she doing? Like, that's how my mom, she never really was like, this is what sex is. You know, I think, I, I, well, that's what you, I can agree with you two on that. My mom, she wasn't really religious, but she wasn't really like, sit down, let's talk about sex, mm -hmm. you know? And um, I didn't know what sex was, but I felt like with movies and TV and the stuff that I was hearing and the stuff that, that I seen going on, I kind of just had to put two and two together. But from that, experience but I was so traumatized by her in there with him and like when I just woke up it was kind of like somebody told me Santa Claus died or something like I looked up to her so much and when I saw that she was like jumping off with this nigga it kind of made me like oh I would never do that you know so I lost my virginity when I was 19 and um it was to my best friend like me and me and him were like we worked together and I saw him every single day. We, we, he had a girlfriend, a little dirty, dusty ass, had a girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> but me and him was like best friends. And when I did lose my virginity, I remember feeling like, yo, I lost my virginity to somebody and I'm, I don't regret it. I never felt mm -hmm. like, ew, like I can't believe, like I was, I always am happy that I lost my virginity to him. And I'm happy that I, I and it's not even about waiting. Cause I feel like when it's time, it's time. Like. Mm -hmm just growing up and seeing everything that I saw I just wanted to, I wanted it to be special and I didn't want to have to explain to people like 
oh, I just did it because everybody was doing it. You know, so that's kind of mm -hmm. my little story. Oh. <laughs> I'll go. Okay, so. You got to I'll go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, you got to go. No, um, okay, so. Like Meg said, I'm a her rap. And I was, I, I was a real, like, real her rap when I was younger because I started going to public school. I was introduced to, like, a couple people. And we'd be, like, be outside, like, hanging around. Like, long story short, like, I used to always, like, get in the stuff. But I never wanted to go all the way. Like, I was, like, scared. I was, like, nervous. It just it just never even occurred to me. It's like, well, we just going to, like, touch. And then that's it. Like, I'm going to go home. Like, my mom's busy. <laughs> I lost my virginity when I was 16. I want to say it was junior year summer so i was about to be a senior that september and i lost it to this boy that i have been talking to for like five six years like we just been like good friends like on and off and we would flirt but like we knew each other for so long like he like built up my self-esteem i don't know if he knows that but like him always telling me like oh you're so pretty oh don't worry about this don't worry about that like he built up my self-esteem not to say that he didn't like hurt me in the process because it was the type of relationship that was like we're on and off, but we're not really a thing, but you can still like, I remember when I found out he had a girlfriend. I was, I was, I had my little heart broke that night. I remember I was sitting in front of my mom, getting my hair braided, and she didn't understand why I just like shut down from the conversation. So we like took a break, and I went outside on the balcony and called him, I was like, why would you do this to me? Like, da 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 da. And I was more so mad, cause like, why do you like say nothing? Like, you could have just shot me a little text or something. Like, yeah. you didn't even have to, do all this. He's like, oh no, I'm sorry. Da, da 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 But even to this day, I'm glad that he was the person I lost it with because I could still talk to him, like, and explain to him, like, how I was feeling or why I feel the way I felt now. I was right at home, staying home, I live now, right in my room, being grown. And <laughs> even like my mom, she would always be like, oh, well, you, when you want to have sex, come and tell me. I didn't never tell her. <laughs> 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 nervous like i'm about to be 20 years old and i still have not sat down and told her and i'm like at this point i hope she just knows like <laughs> that, and I'm like, i hope she just that knows and i don't have to talk about it i'm like if she don't ask i'm not gonna say nothing i don't know why i don't i feel because i feel like she's gonna act no, this is why i don't talk to her about it because i do have a lot of male friends and they always come over i do have a lot of friends I don't want her to think that every She's time I came like, over, yeah. that's what I was doing. Right. Like that. Granted, sometimes I was, but every time I wasn't, and I don't want her to think that when I'm with a friend, like that's what I'm really doing. I'm like, no, we're really just chilling. Like, maybe I'll tell her. I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I never told my mom, honestly. I, I never just told her. I feel like, girl, you, you know. know. <laughs> <laughs> we moved to East Orange when I was in the eighth grade. And nothing was on my mind but boys. Because for the first time in my entire life, when I was a kid, I wasn't worried about boys. I just wanted to play, I wanted to sing, I wanted to dance. But when I got to the eighth grade, boys were finally giving me attention. They were telling me I was pretty. I was like having all these offers of boys who wanted to be my boyfriend. And I was in the eighth grade, so like I felt like I was old enough to date. I had all these little boyfriends and a lot of my experiences, I didn't realize they related to other women so much until I started sharing the experiences. I used to park my car right there. It's funny because if you late, you gotta go around there. <laughs> well, I had a boyfriend. <laughs> name is Amy. He used to pick me up from my house at 8 o'clock. School started at 8 o'clock, so we wouldn't get here till like 8.07. I used to come late to school every day because they was threatening me, but I would like, um, like, I wouldn't be able to graduate if I kept coming late to school. <laughs> but that still didn't stop me. I still was late. Because they couldn't not graduate somebody with a 3.6 GPA. Like, I rarely walked. He yeah, had, like, a little husband when he would pick me up. I would bring him lunch to school. And all the lunch ladies loved me because it was so, like, old school of a girl to be making lunch for her boyfriend. <laughs> but, like, you know, if I was going to make myself a, barbe uh, a buffalo chicken sandwich, that's what I used to like to eat, buffalo chicken sandwich, I would make him one that would pack chips and grapes and shit. <laughs> and then the following year, I got fat as fuck because he started buying me food every single day. <laughs> Breakfast, lunch, dinner. So what happened? <laughs> you got all these stories, like, shit was just terrible and, like, dudes that treated you shitty. 
No, we had like the, one of the best relationships I had before the one I'm in currently. He was like super duper in love with me. Like I could do no wrong. I was like the queen of his life. And I just like, I don't know, like I always thought that he was gonna break up with me. So I was like super mean to him, but I would manipulate him. So like I would be super nice to him. Like, oh, I love you, making him lunch and stuff. And then I would do something evil. <laughs> so he knew not to get used to me or take advantage of me. Like I would like, text other niggas. Cause I just, I don't know. I just needed the attention from everywhere. Cause I was like so low. I had such low self-esteem because of like high school. Like being in this school, like high school was hell. I couldn't talk to my mother about everything I was going through with my first love. She didn't know I was having sex. It was a lot of things that she didn't know. But Miss Nisi is my best friend Byron's mom. And growing up, I used to spend so much time at her house. Her and I began to develop a relationship and she would see what I was going through because I wasn't telling nobody, but she would see. I would be crying, he cheated on me, he da 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 da. So she really, she put me up on game because her son loved me so much. And she began to love me because her son loved me. And she was just telling me all about like what I was going through, how I wasn't alone, and how she was telling me stories from her own childhood and putting me up on game that nobody else was talking to me about. So I wanted to talk to her because she just recently had a baby at 46 years old. This, yep. this, so I'm gonna treat you just like this. Just like that. Because these other men or these other whoever I was dating taught me that. Taught me. And Kay Lajifa was a big cheater. He was a big cheater. Um, but I remember, remember he was 14, I was 16. We fell completely in love. How I knew I loved him, I couldn't think, sleep, or do anything without him. Um, my mother wanted me to come and I was always listening to her, but this time I disobeyed her and kind of argued with her. And it was so funny. I argued with her, I went off and said, I ain't listening to you. And she stopped back and laughed. It was like, wow, you love him. You in love? Like she, she felt it because she had done been through it, but she knew because I'd never raised my voice at her or got funky with her. I wouldn't do that. I'm very, very respectful. She knew at that moment. And I was like, I don't love him. She said, yes, you do. Because you, you done came out your face. And I was like, wow, maybe I like, it's funny because you don't really know what love feel like. Love is when you, when you feel like you can't eat, when you're totally full and you can't swallow when you hurt. It's a matter of fact, it's a, it's a pain. The love is when you hurt from love, it's worse than somebody passing away. At least passing away is final. That love hurt is the pain, most painful thing in the world. That's how I knew I loved him, but he was such a cheater. Oh my, oh. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Did you have a conversation with your mother about sex before you had sex? Absolutely not. Never. Why do you think that was? Well, to be honest, I didn't care for my mother, Dave. You know, I didn't know. Um, we didn't. We had a close relationship as we as I got older. I was raised by my grandparents, and um, my mother was a single mom, and I had to watch my brother all the time. And I felt there was favoritism, you know, there. So we didn't have that. And you people would never believe because I love Wanda to death. But no, I mean, she wasn't good. I wouldn't have talked to her. I would have spoke to somebody else. Oh, I heard a finger. Okay. Just heard a finger. Mommy's baby. So yeah, we didn't really talk about that. We didn't, we didn't talk about that at all. The first time I was introduced to love was with Lodgy's father. And that was that was amazing. And um, it wasn't even a sex thing. I just like totally just fell in love with him by him just by himself. I was 16. It was my 16th birthday. And um, and he kind of chased and chased and chased me. And and I just really that was, that was the first time I just love. And I just loved him just to death. I did. And it was it didn't even have nothing really. It just was him. It was him. It was the way he loved me. I tend to love people who I know really loved me a lot. That, and that, that can be where, where I think I don't have insecurity. I think that's the insecurity. And probably so because when I got about, I think about 13 or 14, that's when I started picking up weight. I started to be a chubby little girl then. And my uncle told me, he said, you don't want to grow up be chubby. You better lose that weight because men use fat girls. That was his exact words. I, I would never forget that. And that stayed in my head. Uh, to, be, to be honest, that stayed in my head. I probably messed up a lot of boyfriends. You know, if I could be with a boy, probably really adore me. But let them ask me for a dollar or fifty cent. 
Oh, you ain't using me. I had my guard up. I probably could have had men that was probably, I don't even know what you would consider your equal. Maybe, you know, had a little bit more established. But I always thought that if they was, why would they, well, they could get somebody else. You know what I'm saying? I felt like if I was um, in a better position, I would be idolized more. And that's my comfort zone. I had a boyfriend before there was, his name was, I don't care, I don't give a fuck, his name was, I don't care. You're going to block it out anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and we went together for two years. So he had told me in the 10th grade that he wasn't going to Tyson no more. And then all of a sudden I saw him on the first day of school at Tyson. He was a liar. I just needed to establish that <laughs> he's a liar. By like mid 10th grade, I heard that he was fucking with this girl who I know, like who used to be friends with me. Like she used to come to my house and everything. So he started dating her or whatever. So eventually I became his side chick. In order to win him back, I used to do like whatever he wanted me to do. So he texted me like, where you at? And I was like, I'm, I'm about to go to class. And he was like, nah, come to the PA side by the band closet. So I was like, okay. I was like, I am about to come. So I dipped off from my friends. Like, I just snuck off after lunch and went over. And he was in the band closet. I had never did, like, no. I, I thought that was, like, thought shit. Like, but he, like, I don't know. I was so in love with him and I just wanted him back. So I ended up, like, fucking him in the band closet in this school. And I feel like that was, like, the lowest point of my life. Cause like anything could have happened. Like anybody could have walked in. Like I could have got expelled. I didn't care. My first love was some corny wannabe gang banging ass nigga who couldn't get his nose in my pussy now. But when I was 13, I loved the ground he walked on and his word was the law. Like I never felt like I had a big forehead. I never thought my feet were big cause I always had fly shoes. I thought my butt was cool until he told me otherwise. And then I realized that niggas love to have us insecure and crazy so they could be mediocre and still be in control. A slick talking nigga will really have you feeling like being a bad bitch is solely physical when that's a mental game. It's like self-love is a real uphill battle that you have to fight by yourself. Because I used to look for validation in my lovers and I realized that I was not going to find it. I don't want to be with somebody who I think can give or take me, to be honest. Be honest, I want to be, I want to be felt like I'm the, the best thing since bread and butter to them. Every man that I've been with, each one that I had a relationship with, absolutely um, chased me. And, and I, I, honestly, I don't know why. I, mean, I guess that pretty much, um, it really does start from home. Like I said, my grandparents raised me. My, my, I was, my, my mother had me as a young, young person. So her father, which is my grandfather, raised me. And he idolized me. He idolized me. So that's in my head that to me, that's the only way to be loved when somebody really, I like to know, I like a man to know that I know I like to know a man love me to death. That's the only type of way. And it really doesn't care about their status or whatever else. And I know people, oh, you got to get a man with money or got a good job or whatever like that. I got a good job. I got money. I mean, I just... I know what I like and what I love. And I want somebody who truly loved me um, and put me on a pedestal. And not, I don't want nobody to feel like they can, give, they can give or take me. Do you think that that guard ended up helping or hurting you when you look back at it now? I think it hurted me because it limited myself. I was always tiptoeing and so nervous that you're always so nervous that somebody was always out to, out to use me or, or do so. And it probably wasn't even the case. Men will use anybody who's insecure and um will allow themselves to be used it's not just it's more so they go for the overweight women because most overweight women are more insecure than others but that's something that a man just go it's more of an insecurity thing and rather a weight thing and i learned that later on in life and said wow i probably really messed myself up having that fear for all those years you know that was um given to me when destiny comes to like Oh, yes. She says she wants to have sex. Or she says she wants to be in love. What will that moment be for you and, and how will you talk to her? Oh my goodness. 
Oh, boy. It's hard to think about because she's so little. Ah, just a girl. I always, I'm so glad I don't got no girls. Got to go through that conversation. That's going to be so scary. Um, part of the first question, I'm like, who wants to do this? Do you want to do this? Or is somebody making you do it? Or are you doing it for him? Are you doing it because you love him and you curious and, and you just got those feelings or are you doing this because, because he wants to do it? That's my first question. If she can answer, I'm like, and be honest. I'm like, you know, be honest with me. You know, well, he really, you know, it depends on her response. I, I, if her response is anything like, well, you know, he really want to do it and he been asking me, you know, then I'm going to say, you ain't ready. I, I, want, I want her to say, you know, I, I love him. I love him and I'm so curious when he touched me. I get a response like that, then I would have to take it another way. Then I would have to actually sit down and explain to her, um, you know, what to do, what not to do, what to look for, protecting herself and, and, and let her know, prepare yourself that this may not be, you know, what you think it's going to be. Um, it's a potential that can be all he want. And he may leave you after that, you know, as a, as a conquest. So, I don't know. I can't even. Oh, I can't even look at her and even think about that. But that would be my first question to her. Why do you want to do this? Is it truly for you because you want to do it, or are you doing it for him? We're talking about like relationships with our mothers. Oh like, yeah, it's, 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 it's time to but, talk about like how you were introduced to love, like in relationships with your parents. Yeah. Did you see where your parents together? Mm -hmm. Did you see your parents oh. in love? Were they yeah. affectionate? Yeah, my parents are still together. I'm I'm blessed to say that my parents aren't divorced. And I'm one of five and all of them are from my mother and my father. And that's something that I can say just being an open individual, a lot of people don't have at all. They have a lot of half siblings. I can just say that in knowing sex now, I see how we were created. And I'll just be like, Y'all nasty, yo. Y'all had us back to back. <laughs> yo, I'm a what? My sister's 91. I'm 92. My brother's 93, 95, 97. Y'all didn't take Poppin', no breaks, yo. yo. Why you mad? Why you mad? Expensive back then, like y'all tripping. Yo, I love all my siblings, but y'all really was like on it. Like, come on, yo. <laughs> Like, no, yo, girl. my father a cute dog. I'd be like, ooh, Omega oh. Sci-Fi, stay away. I won't touch y'all none of that. Because if y'all give me five in a row, I'm busting. <laughs> I'm a bubble. I can't do it. But they beautiful together, you feel me? Mm -hmm. Someone else can share. I'm not doing it. Because I, I will talk about I've story. had a similar um, background. Like, you know, my family, like, my whole family is Muslim. We grew up in Islam. Mm -hmm. But, like, the Islam in Gambia is, like, intertwined with, like, culture and religion. And culture oftentimes, like, supersedes religion. So whatever we did in the culture is kind of what went by, like, what went over religion oftentimes. And, like, I wasn't taught about sex. Sex was a taboo. Like, my parents had an arranged marriage. Like, a lot of my uncles and aunts had an arranged marriage. And we just we just knew at a very young age that we don't talk about sex. Sex necessarily doesn't exist until you get married and then you have to have sex. But either even then, like we just don't talk about it. So for me, like I'm an incest survivor, so um, I was so between the ages of seven to nine, and I knew at a very young age I really didn't like myself and I hated myself for a very long time before I came into recovery because I'm a recovering alcoholic. So, like, I was introduced through sex, through, like, people that I hung out with, like, the older crowd. So, like, 10 to 13, I was, like, exper experimenting sexually with boys and girls. And I remember even coming out um, at 13 to, like, my three closest childhood friends that I was bisexual. And, like, I don't remember what they said, but I remember the responses I felt. And, like, they just all stepped away. And that kind of really just, like, I knew that I should go back in the closet because it's much safer there for me. So like, so internalized homophobia was there. And like, I lost my virginity at like 17. Um, I was like a senior at the time. So I, I really like, I, I tried to wait as long as I could, but like, it was just like, okay, it's kind of that time where I, I'd be an individual. So I like lost my virginity like Christmas Eve. 
And then it was just like, I just felt so uncomfortable. And it just like wasn't as great as I thought it was going to be. And it was just like, I don't even know if it was like my decision solely or like, I was like, okay, this is kind of like the peer pressure where you kind of have to feel like you have to belong and do something. Mm -hmm. So like after that, I didn't really have sex after that for a while. So I came into college and I just chose really toxic people to love because I just had this philosophy where like, if I love broken people, they will in return love me back. And one of the ways I could do that was through sex. So even though the relationship was toxic, he was emotionally abusive, he didn't know how to be vulnerable. The best relationship or connection we had was sex. So that's how we knew how to communicate with each other. Because I also was very, I didn't know how to, my parents never taught me how to like express your emotions and tell people how you're feeling and ask what your needs are. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what I did until like I came into recovery and learned like, okay, I need to ask for what I need. I need to be honest and let people know where I'm at. And if I need to save my life in order to save my life, I have to be honest or I'm not going to make it, you know? So, yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah that was real. No question. I appreciate yeah. it. <laughs> I literally, I just found out that, like, my mom was, like, my dad's, like, first whatever. Like, they were just a thing. Like, she was the first woman, like, that he, because he has a lot of kids. Okay, so my dad has a lot of kids. Like, he has, like, so many. He passed away when I was, uh, freshman in high school or whatever and I don't know and uh, the fact that like he passed away I feel like that fucked me up when I lost my virginity because I lost it to someone that it was just like a random person I was just like oh let me just like fuck some nigga that like I won't get attached to <laughs> <laughs> so I had sex with this like producer who's like mad fucking scheming cause he said that he was like 25 but he's probably like fucking old but he looks fucking young right mm -hmm. and so <laughs> yeah we lost like i lost it like i don't regret it but i'm also like you're fucking gross right, right. 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 You're lying to people right. Like, right. i feel like i just don't want to get attached because i already lost somebody that i was attached to like who am i gonna get attached to now so do you think that works do you think that you can have sex with someone and not be attached to yeah i mean i i had sex with i lost my virginity with that guy i don't it's like whatever okay Sorry. yeah and i had sex with him again like after not so many like probably like twice after that did you really want to or you just felt like it was time i don't know how that happened it just happened no well no i hate when people say that actually but because <laughs> it's like how you slip on a dick <laughs> <laughs> after a while but i do think that i get attached i know myself yeah. and if i have sex with you i'm probably gonna get attached probably. so could you like spontaneously i could i could, airport, I could be i could be spontaneous you know, somebody from somewhere you've always wanted to i've go. never did that though me. but i'm saying like can you envision it and just be like okay, we're getting on our flights and I may never see you again, like go to Dubai and I'm like back to Florida or something like that. You feel me? Like, I can, I can probably do that okay. because I can probably do anything. <laughs> but I do think that I will still be on the plane like, damn, <laughs> 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 That's what I have to do. Like, 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 right, like, like you ain't gonna ever see me again. Like, can I at least snap you? Like, something, like, that's it? I'm never gonna see you again, like, I don't know. Maybe I put it on my bucket list. <laughs> I feel like if I fuck you, like I have to at least give a fuck about you, just yeah. a little bit. A just little because, like, bit. You know, I can't just be bit. fucking somebody that I just really don't care about. Right, like, because right. that means I can just fuck a random stranger like that. Right. Like, and I, I really can't. Like, I need to at least know you, like your last name, please. Like, don't make me feel like I'm just picking them up. So, I mean, I feel like I care about you, but not that serious. Like, yeah, you talking to all these hoes? All right, I don't care. Like, <laughs> when I call you, you just need to be available to come here and then. Get the fuck out after okay. so then I can be by myself. I think that, like, with me, especially when I have sex with somebody, I start to care about them just for simple fact, like, oh, well, how are you today? Like, what happened with you today? Like, did you eat today? Like, are you okay? Like, and I think that, I think that's just my personality all together because, like, say I want to continue this relationship, I want you to be all right, right. to be all right for me. Like, I want yeah. you both to be healthy mm -hmm. and be all right. Like, so you can't about love. I don't know. I don't know if it's I don't know if it's love. I think it's just like it may or may not be, but then I feel like I'm naturally just like nurturing, like I'm that mother friend, like 
we go on the trip. I got the bag with the wet naps and the sanitizer and, like, <laughs> all the stuff. So I feel like it's naturally just, like, are you okay? Like, are you, like I don't ever want to be around somebody who's not okay because I feel like you're going to rub off on me. Yeah. And I just want to make sure you're good. So whatever we do, like, it'll be great. Like, right. I don't know if it's necessarily love. I think I'm just so caring, which might be why people think that I care if, like, we have sex and never talk again. No, 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 no. This so when not... you loved for the first time, how did you know that you were in love? Um, what did it feel like? It just felt like, I don't know. It was just, like, it was just all over the place, like, I could talk to a whole bunch of different people, but I know I only wanted to talk to him. And I think I knew I was in love when I actually got my heart broke. Like, mm-hmm. I felt it, like, crack. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's when I really know. Like, dang, I must have really loved this boy because he really just hurt me. Like, that was, like, that was serious. I don't mm-hmm. know necessarily. And, like, even now to this day, like, I have love for him, but I remember a moment of me really, like, being, like, in love with him. Like, only wanted to talk to him, only wanted to text him. Like, always would know what he was doing, if he was all right. And a lot of times I'd be mad at him for it because I was like, you have me here, like, trying to give you my all and you just, like, not, like, what's yeah. going on with you. Mind you, he was older than me. Like, I'm about to be 20 and I think he turned 24 in, in February. So when I was, like, younger, when I was, like, 16, he was already, like, 20. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, how are you not this ready? And you're grown. Wait, was he a Pisces? <laughs> no, his birthday is uh, February. I, I don't know, he might be. His February birthday is February 18. Okay. Aquarius. 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 That's my little sister's birthday. Really? Yeah. I was like, have you ever been in love? So I was just about to tell y'all. <laughs> <laughs> love and sex kind of go like hand in hand with me because I use sex to find love for a long, mm. very, very long time. Um, I get a little emotional about it just because I haven't ple- completely gotten over it, but. Somebody gives this a Give me tissue, please. Oh, my God. 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 Oh, my You're beautiful. Yeah. You're beautiful. So, um, yeah, like my mom, we ain't never really, she talked to me about sex when I got in about, I guess when she started noticing I had breasts, but it was more so like, don't do it. Like, she didn't say why or what I should do or what to come. Well, she said come to her, but I was kind of scared of my mother. So before I knew about sex, I was introduced to sex through my older cousin when I was in about third grade. I would go visit my father. He would work overnight and my cousin watched me and my other little cousin and he would come in there and just, I didn't get raped, but he molested me and he would use himself to come. Oh, like it was just, it was bad. And I was confused about a lot of things because I'm like, okay, I don't know. First of all, I don't know what this stuff is that's coming on me, but it's there. And it's my cousin, and he was mean. Like, he would, he was abusive, too. So, and he would tell me not to say anything, you know? Don't don't tell your father, because it'll get worse. Or don't tell your mother, it'll get worse. And I was scared of him, so I just begged my father, please, daddy, just let me, let me go with you, right? Take me with you, please. He don't want to take me. So I, I dealt with that for a all the whole summer and then I never went back but I never said anything and I feel like his words just followed me forever like I didn't officially lose my virginity till I was 14 a couple of months before my birthday he was 19 and I just I felt like I can keep a relationship through sex and I can keep a man through sex and even though I didn't want to do it because I wasn't really comfortable with it, I felt like that was the only way to keep them. And then when they leave, it's like, okay, I need to do this again now. Mm-hmm. Now I gotta have sex again. It's like, oh my God, I'm back to square one. And I did that for about five or six boyfriends and then when they broke up in between, I was trying to find somebody and it wasn't working. so. I feel like if my mom 
want to talk to me about it because of course you see it on TV, you see it in the movies, they tell you to close your eyes, but why? If that's ultimately how I got here anyway, so why are you so afraid to talk to me about this? You know, that's how I feel now. Like, you're interested, you see, I'm good. Okay, we need to talk now. Mm -hmm. You need to know what's going on. Just in case something try happens or you're interested or whatever, like uh, everybody is so scared to talk about sex and what happens and things like that happen and girls are scared to talk about it and they don't you know they they just go out here looking for love in the wrong ways yeah you know so i jump in as a mom sure you don't mind yeah um there's no guidebook to this you know what i'm saying like just like all of you we're i mean my mother never really spoke about it she handed me a book you know what i'm saying like so she didn't know how to talk to me either. So I think that although we're supposed to be your models, right? right. You know, your examples, we don't always know either. Because mm. parenting is kind of like you do it and you just keep moving as you go along, you kind of learn something new and you may say like, oh, okay, you know, I didn't know that then, so I'm, my bad, I apologize. Mm -hmm. and I'm gonna try to do better, but you don't have a guide. And so I'm so sorry that you know you haven't had uh you know a conversation like this with your mother but she may not know what to say either so i'm only saying that just to first of all give yourself the benefit of the doubt but also maybe give your mom the benefit of the doubt and maybe try to talk to her because you're an amazing open group of women right so why not just go and say mom you know can we talk yeah Mm -hmm. I did, and in that I really learned that it was like a, the way that I am, it was just a cycle because it's how my mother is, it's how my grandmother is, it's how my great grandmother is. Like, they dealt with a lot of things and they were quiet about a lot of things. So, it was just like I see that and I, I saw that growing up, and ultimately, that's how I became, even though I didn't want to. And I said, I wasn't going, I'm never going to be like my mother, I'm never going to do this. I still was that because that's what I grew up on, that's what I saw, that's what was around me. So, it just, it was almost, I don't really know what to call it, but it just kind of happened, you yeah. know? So now I'm like, I look at love and sex in a different way. I started um, being around a whole bunch of different older women, nobody really my age and they, I would just got a lot of insight and wisdom from them. And I just feel like we need to be at some type of, we have to have some type of mental connection somewhere in here in order for me to like, do this with you now that's where i am now in my life like i feel like i can't enjoy sex with you if i can't build with you if we can't mm -hmm. you know work on something mm -hmm. like why are we doing this then what is mm -hmm. the point mm -hmm. it doesn't have any substance we're just doing it and now i got all these emotions and i'm feeling some type of way and i don't even like you yeah. you know like why what is the point of putting myself through all of that so mm -hmm. i I'm trying to figure love out and the only way that I figured I could figure it out is loving myself because I've done tried to find it in so many men that I haven't really given myself the attention that I needed you know so I I don't like being alone I'm in and out in and out of relationships so now I'm single I'm like I don't care how nice you are I don't care what you do for me what you buy for me and none of that means anything to me what means something to me is that you care that I want to get myself together and I want to work on me now if you want to be my friend and go through that with me and until I'm ready hey I'm for it but if not you got to stay away you got to stay away from me right now because I can't be good for anybody if I'm not good for myself so me. Yo, thank but you for sharing. Oh, that, that was so much love. Wow, thank you. That was intense. After I talked to the um, 18 to 25 year old age group, I thought it was necessary to talk to a group of women older than that because 
a lot of our age group, I'm 21, our age group 18 to 20, 25, we are still in the thick of trying to fall in love and trying to figure out who we want, who we want to be and who we want to be with. So I want to talk to an older age group who was a little more seasoned. I just wanted to ask them about love and where they were with it. And they're a little older. Do they still believe that love is what we believe love is. It does. Mm -hmm. it sure All does. my experiences, I've learned a lot from. You know, I think I'm more at 53, more more ready to settle. You know what I mean? Stuff that I missed out on, probably my yeah. 20s, 30s, the whole marriage, and now I can handle stuff better. You know, I just know some more. I'm wise, mm -hmm. very wise now. You know, so. So you're still a commitment foe, but you would marry now? I I yeah. would be in a cup. Minute relationship. <laughs> she, she, uh, uh, she, she, I don't know about the marriage thing. I don't know about the marriage thing. Okay. You know, I, I don't know. To, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe it all depends if, you know, but I would be in a committed relationship. Okay. So, you know what I mean? I've been celibate four years. Just, you know, if you got to take like that selfish thing, mm -hmm. this has been my selfish time. Good. Mm -hmm. And I'm Good happy with myself, you know, with a lot, you know, I've just been through some things. So, so what would the man have to look like or act like in order? Just, uh, just independent, um, uh, humorous, um, and caring. He would have to be caring. So, I mean, I think even occupation would matter to me, okay. but he would just have to be caring. Somebody who, who's a uh, homebody, I, you know, he would have to be a good father. Mm -hmm. You know, just, yeah. you know, those kind of things. So, and, you know, like my age, okay. about my age, but just, just happy. Well, you know, oh, okay. I, I, I guess happy. I think, I think, I think either really, one of us right. uh, would be looking for different things mm -hmm. because I'll tell you, the dude that I, I would be, I, I'm not really looking for marriage, mm -hmm. not necessarily. Mm -hmm. If it happens, it happens, yeah. but not necessarily mm -hmm. in this stage in my life. I would be looking for a dude that has his own money. Mm -hmm. He has to be kind. Mm -hmm. He has to be considerate. Mm -hmm. He has to love to travel. Mm -hmm. And he must be God-fearing, of course, mm -hmm. um, and open to experiences, I would say. So healthy because when you get to my age, I, I'm not trying to deal with walkers and wheelchairs and all that stuff. He has to be healthy and have a healthy attitude about That's life. Right. Good. So oh, yeah. if, it, if he could hit somewhere in that range and he's not looking like the hunchback back of Notre Dame, <laughs> <laughs> we can do that. We can talk now. We can talk. Yeah. The negotiations. Yes, yes. <laughs> absolutely. I'm going along because I think you piggyback off Dodie, right, with what you just said. Right. For me, I'm going to add one thing to it. He has to be honest. Very yeah. honest. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Amazing. Because we have been through so many liars. And man. loyal. Yes. yes. And loyal. And loyal. Yes. Loyal. Yes. Loyal. Mm -hmm. loyal. So anybody else piggyback on all those things? Patience. Yeah. Um... I've been in a committed relationship for 20 years. And the funny thing is, is his sisters love me. My family loves him. And every time that subject comes up, well, you guys have been together a long time. When are you going to get married? Leave it alone. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. Fix, fix what's not broken that's for what? Yeah. yeah. It works yeah. for you. My aunt says, why yeah. buy the cow? Yeah. You that's get the what I said. Pretty, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> but see, that, that works very well as long mm -hmm. as one person doesn't get married but with younger people sometimes a young lady wants to get married and mm -hmm. a guy doesn't want to get yeah. married mm -hmm. and and i and i tell young ladies all don't the time if you right don't, don't do, do that it. yeah that's the young lady talking right there you don't mm -hmm. stay in somebody you have i'm engaged that's my fiance how when are you get married we don't have a date okay you so have a ring I, I, no yeah, I, I he, what he that. did was take you off the market that's it. with no Promise, and mm -hmm. when he gets ready to walk, he don't. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. Done. Mm -hmm. I don't even. I don't know. I, I have an unusual. Thing. I don't think that. I think it depends on where you are. Yeah. And you put a hundred percent all in right away. Mm -mm. True. Very good. You point. know. So I, I think that plays a lot in where you've already been. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So Tip, as your young self, so have you been in a relationship? Yes. So was it a positive relationship? Yes and no. Okay. Mm -hmm. So may I ask, did you take anything? Are you still in the relationship? No. Okay. 
Okay, so what did you take away from the relationship? What you said, learning what you want, what's more important, and what you're going to take and what you're not going to take. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's And then you see what's out there. (laughs) (laughs) Slim pickings. (laughs) Yeah, so it's just like, you know, I don't know. Okay. But my friends always told me I'm the one that always has somebody trying to talk to them. You always have somebody in your face, or you, so you always have friends. It's my personality, I think. And not intentionally, like, oh, I want, you know. Yeah. Right. But it's, it's my generation, it is hard out here. Not really, because I do know a lot of people that have got married, you know, having kids, and but they're older. A lot of my generation, they're, they're waiting until like 30, 35, yeah. and which is good. It's mm-hmm. a good time. Yeah. Instead of people yeah. just, because our generation, um, some of the females are not as mature, but the Females are usually more mature than the males, so mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. that balance there. It's like, come on, man, this isn't gonna work. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I know what I want, and I'm being selfish. Good for you. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. So All right. All right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My mom, she had me when she was 14, and it was the first time like she had sex. She just happened to get pregnant. By the time she was 19, she had my little brother. And I don't know how old she was when she had my second brother, but I know for her, like, we've never spoke about this at all, but, like, just from watching her, like, how she is when she talks to me, like, the things she talked to me about, she'll always, like, now as I'm older, she'll always be like, you know, you have to take care of yourself first, focus on your education, all that stuff. So I know just from the conversations we have, she never got to really witness, like, that real love yeah. i don't even know if now she gets to witness it as like a grown woman i honestly don't know but that's like with my mom and then with my dad he he's just always been a player like he's always did woman dirty like when he got my mom pregnant he had four well not four three other women pregnant at the same time they just all happened to like get abortions and stuff and he's been that same way. He actually just got married for the second time. And I'm like, well, hopefully, you know, this time is a little bit different. Hopefully this time lasts. So I never really got to saw that real love from my dad's side neither. And even growing up, he was never like opening and inviting like for us to have that type of relationship. So when it comes to like boys, it's just, For me, it's like, all right, well, I already see how my dad treats women, so you're not going to do that to me. Like, I already peeped game before you even try to do it. But then when it comes to that, I'll, like, separate myself. And then I realized I started getting to the point where it's like, all right, well, either I got to get played or I got to do the playing. So I came to the point where it's like, all right, I'm not taking any of you guys serious. I'm going to just do me having a whole bunch of, like, different guys for, like, whatever. And that's how, like, this summer is really just about exploring me and, like, doing things for me because it's like, if I could have that type of passion and, like, that type of love for someone else, like, I need to give that to myself first. So this is really just, like, my pause break from all guys. I say it all the time, too. Like, don't DM me. I don't want none of y'all. Like, don't do it. They still do. And I even had this... (laughs) Very annoying, too. I had this one guy. I chilled with this guy one time like we didn't even do nothing we sat on his roof and we smoked and then after that he would really hit me up like so when am i gonna see you again and i just went and replied like because i don't want to see you again <laughs> like if i do i'll hit you up and he was just like oh like oh why are you doing this you're selfish blah blah, blah. and i'm like i told you i'm just trying to focus on myself like don't make me feel bad because i don't really want to get involved with anyone right now and when you said that about um like if you can't understand that i need to grow like that really hit me because that was like a perfect summation of pretty much just what I'm going through right now. So right. thank you yes. for that. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah, that's about it. So. I'm a person who always says like, I love you or I, like I say it a lot, mm-hmm. right? Like I'm, I, I don't know, maybe it's just the way I was brought up or just how I am. Like I say it a lot. So I'm most of the time I'm always the one that says it first. I'm always saying, if anything, like, you could bring me a cup. I'm like, oh, my God, I love you. Thank you. Like, (laughs) it's just one of the words (laughs) that I say all the time. And I think that I realized that I I loved or I was in love with someone when it was just literally all I was talking about was him. All I was thinking about was him. Like, I was thinking of him more than I was thinking of myself. Um, So I agree with you. I think that that's how I knew that I was in love at first. But then I think when you take a step back and you see that, it's not always 
me putting myself on a back burner for you. It's when someone, anyone does it for you as well, does, does more for you than you do for them or, or will meet you halfway or can compromise or, you know, just little small acts of kindness from the, you know, from a guy would, would show me that now, now that's what I know what love is. What? So no, fake. you don't know that thing. So it's a fake. No, that's fake. That, that's talking, definitely fake. Be that's definitely fake. No, we happen to Say, you. Move back, move wait, back. Wait, wait. Throughout the conversation, we were talking about a lot of different things, and they began to touch on their childhoods. Like, it didn't just start in middle school. It started elementary school. It started seeing their parents and I felt like I skipped a group so I decided to do a younger group and whew, <laughs> I learned a lot of different things. I just wanted to know are our kids seeing it on TV? Do they believe in the same fairy tales that we once believed in? Because a lot of the women echoed my same sentiments about wanting to fall in love and wanting a, a partner who was going to believe in them and make them feel special. And I wanted to know if younger girls wanted that too, or has the world changed so much that they don't feel like that's possible? Mumu, how do you know that your mommy and daddy love each other? You don't know? Ask Hope. <laughs> oh, that's Layla. So Take over. Okay, Layla. Um, Layla, don't clap while she comes. Oh, my mom and dad laugh at each other's jokes sometimes. And um, but they make fun of each other. They make yeah, fun of each other. They make fun of each other a lot. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> Do any of you guys like boys yet? Nope. No. Nope. No. Nope. Oh, my brother. Ugly. Your brother. Ugly. Oh, I, I do love my brother. You love your brother? And he did. He brought me a letter. When do you think your mommy and daddy started to like each other? Do you think you're ever going to start to like boys ever? No. Nope. I'm no way. Nope. Hate hey, them. Hate them. I'll leave. Why are you going to say single? Uh, who can I A brother is some guy kind of brother. Gross. I don't know. That's so not single. You shouldn't kiss you. Forever? Yep. I did not kiss okay, my brother, so, so what about that? Okay, okay, so one second. Let Layla talk, because she's talking now. Who is she now. talking to? Okay. I just want to stay single. I know, so I, but is it, there's no reason. You don't ever want to have children and get married? Mm, I do want to have children, but uh, boys are ugly. Boys, uh, boys are ugly, but you, you do want to have children. But you, unfortunately, you're going to have to get married if you want to have children. Why? How you gonna get children? But do you think you're too young right now? If you decided to like boys, you think you're too young? Too young. Why yes. you think you're too young? Cause we think you're too small. You're too too small? small, like tiny, like this tiny. Not that, not that tiny. Come on. Now. So the stories you read, you don't believe that they can happen. Nope. No. Well, I some of them, them like a princess and a frog. Ooh, that can happen. Yeah, cause a princess could really kiss a frog. <laughs> And, and they, remember, they lived happily ever after. No, they didn't. Oh, because that was fiction. The movie was fiction. It was what? fake. It was? Yes. Yes. It's a princess. It's fake. Princess are not real and kings are not yes, real. Are. Are okay, so, so let me are. ask one, one different question, right? So do you think that your mommy, because both your mommies and, and daddies have been married or are still married now, right? So do you think that they, they live happily ever after no. because they're married? No. Why not? Cause I just don't, I just don't like that. I life. just, life. This is not good. Out. This is, just life is not good. It's not good because you don't, you don't know if you get a job, if you get money, if you get a house. I got married for Yesterday, yeah, yeah. Okay, so still the fairy married tales again. are fake only because <laughs> one, um, uh, a lot of parents argue and they don't always agree on everything for many different reasons. That's mainly why I think it's fake. So that's why you think happily ever after is fake. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. present. And so, does that is that why you don't want to ever get married? You want to stay single? No, that's not why. Well, do you mind sharing? She doesn't like boys. I think she likes girls. <laughs> 
Got to get married on it too. Got to get married. If, if that's how she felt, Munira, it's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Wait, no, I'm sure you would. But I'm in a fog. That's <laughs> <Okay>. not. <laughs> I'm sorry, we all have to laugh. So Layla, you know what? Wait, wait, you are straight. You said you're straight. We don't. We so fun. We don't listen to her. And so, so with that though, Layla, but why do you want to stay single though? Sit down, guys. Back. Come on, sit well, down, sit down. Cause it's it's just trust issues, you know. You can't always trust everybody. Just can't. Can't, can't argue that point. Okay, I can't argue with that. <laughs> no, not at all. Just so, like imagine if you guys are you. What would you and do? At least, so I want to come back to Layla and her trust issues. Um, so you're right. You can't trust everybody, but you don't think you'll ever meet somebody that you could trust enough Stop touching to, to maybe want to get married? It's a couple percent. Yeah. It's like a 50% chance, but I doubt it. Okay. But just who who is your favorite who is your favorite um like you have a favorite singer or a favorite actor? Beyonce. No. No. Beyonce? Definitely that. Beyonce, go with it. Okay. And Beyonce. you have a favorite? Um, like singer, actress. Mm -hmm. Any any whatever you want. You can like make a singer, singer or an actor. Somebody famous. famous. Um, oh, Michael Jackson. He probably Oprah Winfrey. Michael Beyonce. Jackson. Okay. So you know Oprah, Oprah has Stedman. And Beyonce Wait. has Jay Z, so so they all are got married. So you don't think that these are the people that you like? You don't um, think that you can be like that one day? Michael Jackson did get married. Michael Jackson did get married. Well, but he put bleach on himself to make him white. Whoa. Michael Jackson did get married. Well, but he put bleach on himself to make him white. Okay. Well, but but okay. So, yeah. Well, I, we don't know if he poured bleach on himself per se, but but anyway, he did get married one time. <laughs> Oh, no. so Sit back up. <laughs> Sit up, y'all. <laughs> Ew, that's disgusting. I've always taken an interest in Layla just because she reminds me so much of myself as a little girl. I realized that I made a critical error. I underestimated my little cousin Layla's maturity. She was 13 at the time, and I don't know why I didn't think about how mature I was at 13, and I lumped her in with a seven-year-old and five-year-olds, and she was just light years ahead of them, even though I didn't think the age difference was so drastic because she was saying some things that were really alarming to me, especially, you know, that she wanted to be single forever and things like that, and she didn't trust anybody. So I really wanted to get to the root of that, and I wanted to understand where she was coming from or if she just was saying that that day, you know, for shock value. <laughs> parents are affectionate with one another. Yeah. And you don't think that that's possible for you? I, I never said it's not possible. I just don't want it. So why don't you want it? I know you said that it doesn't work out, but your parents are working out. They've been together since I was a little girl. Yeah. Just don't want it. That's interesting to me. Because we talk to a group of women who are a bit older than you, well, a lot older than you, like 18 plus. And a lot of them were saying the same things that you're saying right now about, you know, losing hope in love. But, you know, most of them were still hopeful that it's possible for them. And you said that you know it's possible for you, but you don't want it. And a lot of them want it, like, desperately. They want to fall in love and they want someone who's going to be head over heels for them. That's the problem. You know, you never know if somebody's really telling the truth about it, though. A lot of, you can't trust a lot of people these days. They be lying. <laughs> I know you said that last time. Why do you say that? Like, the shows that you watch? No, I just see it, like, technically, my school is young, but I see it in my school. People are liars. This one friend was telling me that he was friends with this other person only for money. I ain't gonna trust somebody like that. I don't trust it. I don't need so I don't need a partner. I got friendship and family. I'm my friendship.
So do you want to have children and stuff one day? Probably not. Probably not? You see how many people, little kids I got in my family? Yeah, I that's, do. that's enough. <laughs> They're not going to be little kids forever. They're going to be growing up. Well, I will never probably have a child. Knows about the feast. My nieces and nephews will have children. I'll be good. <laughs> so you want to be like the papa auntie who like takes trips and you come into town with gifts for everybody? <laughs> <laughs> I used to think that's what I wanted. Sometimes I think I still want that. I think I want to be single and just like living a life with a dog. Like me and my dog would travel. But you're not single. Yeah, I know. I'm in a relationship. But that relationship every day is work. So I'm just like, damn, this is hard, you know, communicating with somebody. Mm -hmm. And like being in love with somebody and they don't do what you want them to do. Like I can't control my boyfriend. And sometimes that's how I feel. Like it's, if I can't control you, then I don't want to be with you. <laughs> you can't control, you don't, what? Okay. I know. I know it sounds crazy. It sounds crazy, but that's just how we feel. And you definitely have so much time to change your mind. And you're able to change your mind. I feel like a lot of times we, you know, make young girls out to be mothers so early on in life. We prepare them to take care of people rather than taking care of themselves. You gotta take care of yourself before you can take care of other people. You got to find yourself before you can start, like, expanding your family. Mm -hmm. I don't even know who I am yet. <laughs> I don't know who I am either. It changes every day. But if I only save $200 a month for the next five months, I'm only saving $1,000. But since I'll already be out there, all you need is a plane ticket. No, I got a car. I can't. This is my, this is my fear. I was telling you that. Cause I keep being, I keep saying mean things to him about like I'm gonna go out there and not live with him and stuff. But it's only because it's very scary for me, for him to have to be the person I depend on. Like if he comes in the house and I'm unconscious, he's responsible for calling 911. Mm -hmm. Like I call you before I would call 911. No, but I would want you to call 911 first. I keep telling you that. No, but then I'm saying call like me. if like you know if I'm it's a level like, of trust. If mm -hmm. I'm having like anxiety attack, like a panic attack, like he's the only person. Like if I if I can't get to the phone. And I call you. Then he right. Then he. I think he. I'm. I not. I think. I'm but I've sure. never had to like depend on anybody like that. Before. He will come through for you. <laughs> I never wanted like you know to be mad at me to the point where he wouldn't talk to me. So like we would hang out, I would be around him, and I'd just give him attitude so that we could still spend time together, and he could know that he did something wrong. You know, because I didn't never want to like just telling him. Yeah, I didn't never want to not be around him. And he was the kind of person that like if you would tell him something he did wrong, he'd be like, all right, well maybe we should break up then. You know, and I became that in my second relationship. Wow, that's scary because I can hear that. I can hear those words coming out of your mouth that not even to just, you know, I, it's been moments where you said to me, like, I feel like if it's all of this, then why are you even with me? We should just break up. Then. Yeah, like, I'm like, damn, you never happy. Like, he used to do that. Like, I'd be like, I can't believe you was talking to that girl. He'd be like, damn, I can't even talk to nobody. Like, all right, well, since you always upset about everything I do, maybe we shouldn't be together. <laughs> Knowing that I was just going to be like, it's not that. It's just, you know, <laughs> like, downplaying it so i just wouldn't say anything and then like you know i was like made to look so stupid all the time i think that's why i don't have like no real friends now i have like avon and byron but they're like you know my true friends who support me and everything like that but like i don't have any like friends from high school because i always feel like they know too much about me but i also know? think dante one of the things too unfortunately is my background like even yeah. with her father you know, I thought I could depend on him. And he showed me over and over again that I couldn't. 
And so I then had to make sure that I could take care of everything on my own because I had no, because yeah. I had no choice. So I think watching somebody struggle like that, you don't want to depend on anybody else. You don't want to hear like if someone tells you, okay, I'm going to give you some money next week and then they don't show. What, what do you do? But honestly, I do feel like I'm getting to a point in my own development and like, instead of getting jealous and like worrying about somebody cheating on me or like not wanting to be with me, I feel like I am building myself up to be who I want to be so that if I have to be alone or like, you know, if I have to find somebody else, I'll be able to do that. And it, it, it does start from a place, place of insecurity because I'll never forget, you know, like when I wanted to divorce your father and he would say things like, you know, you'll never find anybody else. You'll never get this. You know, but no, but who's going to want you with three children? You know, say things like they're hateful to try to make me stay where I was that it made me stronger. So you feel like it doesn't get any better. Right. It made me stronger, which made me then say, again, if I'm with somebody now and I know I'm giving 100% and you decide you want to cheat, stray, lie, whatever, that's your loss now. Yeah. Because I know that I'm a good partner because I know it that every relationship takes work and every relationship takes communication. That same communication that you're talking about, that now the way mm-hmm. you and Dante are, where y'all express it, you know, yourselves and you're constantly communicating. I try. Like this morning was like a perfect example. Like I'm one of those people who like at first I'll just be mean. Like I'll just say mean things. And then like now I'm getting to a point where I have to address it instead of letting it go. Because like, in my mind, I'll be like forming exactly what I want to say. It'll take me a couple minutes to like say it so that it's not mean and it's not nasty. Like I'll like literally plan out exactly what I'm going to say. And even when I start saying it, I'll start saying stuff like, I don't know. But I know exactly what I'm trying to say. You know, but, like, I don't know. Like, I'm getting emotional now because, like, I don't be wanting to, I don't know, look too... Vulnerable? Yeah, like, too dependent on, like, somebody else. But being, being vulnerable is always an unsafe space, you know, um... Because no matter what, you have to take the leap to be vulnerable. Because no matter what he does, and I'm using Dante just because, you know, we're talking about your relationship. No matter what a person does, you have to understand that your vulnerability is still a choice, but it's also something that's necessary in order to build trust. You can't build trust with anyone if you're not at least willing to give them a shot. You know, you can't walk into it just assuming everything bad. You have to walk into every situation with good intentions. And even if you're disappointed, you still can't lose those good intentions. So that same part where you just said how you're working on it now, like not using anger or something nasty to be your first response, because anger is a safe space for everybody in this, in society. We've learned that it's okay to be mad. You can yell and scream at somebody. But the minute you cry or you say, like, that really hurt my feelings, that looks like weak. It looks weak. And it's not weak. But then, like, strength. people do, like, try to, you know, attack. Things. What's harder for me is thinking about the idea that, like, if I've never given you any reason to believe that, I would use that weakness against you or I would use that vulnerability against you to attack you. What was so traumatic that makes you fear that so much and how can you work past it, you know? Dante, you're also an outlier. I had another friend who used to tell me all the time, be careful of of the representative because the representative is who you want to be, who you want other people to see you as. That's not necessarily who you are. And so we have been told in this society and most of the time it's been proven right that Men and women can't can't be friends. (laughs) They started out with sex and then it just didn't work out and they still wanted to have some type of relationship. That's usually how male and female relationships go. I have one male friend, honestly speaking. I have two male friends, I'm sorry, that I've never done anything at all, would not held their hands, no nothing. Mm -hmm. Um, But as they became older and as we all became older, I was still there for them, but now they have families and yeah. men will then separate themselves off of that. You know what I mean? I didn't have like, all I had was my kids. I didn't have a husband and all that kind of stuff all of, all, all the time. So I could be available, but yeah. they were never available for me in that same capacity. And that's what I think about male, female relationships. So then when you look at me and you say like how your first love is um, out in California and you'll be out there and she's there. 
why wouldn't they think it's a possibility that you could rekindle or you know what I mean like being I would, in a space I would hope like that, that the security in her knowing how I think about her is enough to know that like I'm not allowing space for anybody else to come and take my attention in that type of way and I also understand the realistic side of it which is like well sometimes you don't plan for it it just happens right it right? just happens but my thing is like I guess in getting my heart broken in the past right what I've learned is you can't keep anybody who doesn't want to be kept. True. Right? This is something that I've even heard you say often, but I wonder if you believe it. Which is like, if realistically, no matter how highly you think of me or whatever the case may be, I know you talk about vulnerability, but like, if I was going to be a terrible person to you or if I was going to cheat on you or if I was going to leave you for somebody else, like, shouldn't that be my loss? Why yes, hear it? And I do. with all respect coming from my soul, mm -hmm. I would like I hear you give that same inspiration to other young women sometimes, but I don't know if you believe it for yourself. Cause a lot of times they were shitty dudes. Yeah. I'm not. But what? But but if I did the same things that a shitty dude would do, wouldn't that in turn make me a shitty dude as well? Right, but you're a shitty dude from that moment yeah, be, on. Yeah, but you you're be not knowing, already like, a you, shitty dude. When you're in a relationship with a dude, mm -hmm. like. If he started the relationship already wilding, some women mm -hmm. will still put up with that because they desperately want to be with a man. Mm -hmm. Some women be single and they be miserable being single. All they want is to be with somebody. Mm -hmm. So they'll meet somebody. If he handsome, he don't beat you. Some women will be like, all right, that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't, that's not the life that I live. And sometimes from the outside looking in, like people could see our relationship and be like, oh, why are they together? And why this and why that? But like, this is something that I understand so deeply. So to lose you could be something that really, like, I wouldn't, you know, just be like, oh, whatever. You know, yeah. like, that's just, I wouldn't do that. I guess I wonder in other ways sometimes how much that relates to a level of like self-love and i think that's why it's so important I think that's, that that's the that journey that I, journey. i'm on and like i really commit to it like i'm not the kind of person who like just be on instagram like oh take a bath today <laughs> do yeah. a facial self-care like no like no <laughs> i'm equipping myself with like real things to love yeah. You saying, know, can you just put a little oil or something like this is always my tender spot here and here. This is the tenderest spots on my head. And no matter what I do, they're always a little sore. Thank you. I think what's crazy is that like I have never in my life had a relationship with my father. But because my father has always been so like physically around, you know, like you and, and then you see like. It's so weird. Like you see like fathers on tv or you see like people in your life who like personally have a father like when i was younger my mom started dating mr lance and he had two daughters that he would mm -hmm. <laughs> he would like be around them all the time and they would like always be with us and they became like a part of our family mm -hmm. and i didn't i didn't want him to be my dad like, I wanted a, a, a real she dad. Want, you wanted your own father to be a real dad. Yeah, so, like, it was hard. You know, like, even when my father had, like, stayed with us briefly when we moved away, he would still be, like, locked in the room. Like, he would have the door closed and, like, be in, in the room. And his room was, like, right across from me and Mimi's room. But he didn't ever try to, like... To come in. Get us to, like, come hang out with him or anything like that. So, t to me... What was always so, like, damaging about that is that, like, he didn't, it just seemed like he didn't want to be a dad. And now that I'm older, I see that, like, he didn't know how, you know. And, and sometimes it's like I make excuses for him. But now that I'm on this journey and I see how, like, people's own trauma and, like, baggage can, like, completely inform their lives for the rest of their lives. But it's also a choice, okay? It's a choice like he, to address yeah. it. It's not, you're, like, your father, this is how I feel about it, right? I don't think that he knows how to be a father. I don't think that he knows how to be a husband. You know, that that's an opinion now that I'm way past it and I've been divorced from him since 2008. I can say that. I can say 
he didn't know how to do either one. But I also have to say, through all of the hardships, the, through the physical abuse, the emotional abuse, the financial abuse that I dealt with, and the psychological abuse with your father, his parents living downstairs from us never took him to task. Ne all they do is ignore his children. And it's like I can see it in my mind to this day. I remember the day he came in the house and he was mad about something. So he flipped our table, like the kids' table. We had this like small white table. This picnic, I had a picnic, picnic table, table for y'all. And I remember him flipping it. And I remember you punching him in the face. And this is like the, this is like the first time I ever seen like any like physical violence. I remember, and I just knew that like you had to do it. Like even as a kid, like I knew that like the way he had like his anger, like the way he came in the house, it was like a whirlwind. Like mm -hmm. everybody could feel it. And I had to be no more than like eight years old. And I remember. Nan Nan and Pop. No, this he, is, the grandfather didn't come upstairs. Yeah, this I remember. Nan Nan came upstairs and she was like in your face, like getting in your face, like you put your hands on my side, you put your hands on. Me. And so they sent us downstairs, and Papa stayed in the living room watching Jeopardy. Never moved. He turned never the TV up so that he couldn't hear y'all yelling. And, I and I'll remember. never forget that. I will never forget that as long as I live. And I was eight years old. I'm twenty, about to be twenty-two years old. And, and yet, I would never forget it. So it's almost school. like literally from the time you were a child all the way through up your own first dating experience. Every man I knew was terrible. I didn't like my brother when I was a kid because he had anger problems, of course, because of everything that he had seen and what we had experienced. But like every man I knew, I knew to beware. Like, I knew that, like, never get too comfortable around them. Like, I just knew too much bad stuff about men. Like, my grandfather was trash. My father was trash, you know? So, like, being around anybody, it was just like, okay, so when is this going to get bad? Because it always does. I got trust on no one tatted on me when I was 19. Like, I learned that from, like, young. I can't do it. Why? For what? Y'all just going to play games anyway. It don't make sense. Like, it just... I could I figured I could never get what my parents had. I don't know how they got it and how they stayed together for so long and what they're doing still to this day, but I don't know if that exists. So I'll be just trying to create my own source of happiness and whatever love that I want to find. That's why I'm so open with my feelings. I feel like as long as I'm open, you really can't do anything to hurt me. You can't say anything that is unaware. You can't pull any cards. You feel me? So in every sense, love. You feel me? Love, love, love. And just give it. And <laughs> if you don't give it back and be like, all right, cool, I'm about to take my hug over here. You feel me? Somebody else gonna want that kiss on the forehead over here. You feel me? I wanna know about like everybody's ideal romantic relationship. Like if you could get exactly what you want and from your partner, what does that look like? What does it feel like, sound like? Mm. Smell mm. like. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to be wealthy. I want to be rich. I want to be wealthy. I want to have something that I can say this belongs to me forever. I want somebody that I can do that with. Somebody's mind that is there. Mm. You feel me already? I'm only 25. I don't know. Y'all know 25 girls that talk like that? Please hook me up, okay? <laughs> you feel me? Because when I tell you a lot, there are a lot of older that I go to because I think like that. So my perfect would be somebody in my age range, you feel me? Only like a five-year difference. That's what I want. You feel me? I don't want 10. I might have to do it, though. Shoot, I might have to do 20. They there, you feel me? I would want somebody in five, you know, in the, the 25 to 30 right now you know, ready to build right now. Like, not, oh, I got to help you figure it out. We can figure it out together. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. But that's, you know, what I want as a relationship. I would say it. growth. Um, kind of almost what you're saying. Like, well, someone who's able to, willing and able mm -hmm. to go move with me. Right. Not just like, oh, okay, I'm going to get my shit together. You're going to get shit together. And then we're going to meet up later and then maybe we both can mesh it. No, that might not work. You know, I want someone who wants to work with me to the promised land, if you will. Like someone who we could do it together. Someone who's willing to compromise, show love, love their family, love me, love 
you know, just someone who's willing to love. Because a lot of the guys now, a lot of niggas, they don't know how to love and mm -hmm. they don't want to show it. Mm -hmm. So it's like, um, I'll show you behind closed doors how mm -hmm. I feel about you. Yeah. But when my friends come around or when my family come around, you got to take the back seat and just know that I care about you. But I'm going to tell you later. Like, no, we need to, if this is what it is, then let that be that, you know, in front of whoever. It don't matter if Michelle, Obama, Trump, whoever right. walk in the room, right. show love. Like, that's what you want. That's what I, that's my idea. Yeah. Um, I'm also just what like peace and understanding. Like I feel like no matter what situation we in, I need for you to understand me and for us to have the understanding so we can make whatever work, you know. So um, and I just want to I guess to be love. Like don't hurt me, don't hurt yourself, don't hurt nature. Let's just live and be real with each other like i don't want no fairy tales i don't want nobody else's perception of love i want you to just accept me and have the understanding let's just be yeah. whatever it is gonna right. happen it's gonna happen i can't stop it i can't make it come quicker so just be here with me understand me I'm who i am you are who you are and if we could deal with each other if our energies is there mm. then we are right. Mm -hmm. We're gonna be good. Like I don't really want to think too hard or anything. I just want it to just happen. Like, you do what you love. I do what I love. I'm not gonna put no pressure on it. I'm not gonna put no pressure on you. We just gonna be. It is what it will be. So from what I see from like my brother, my brother and his wife got married last summer. What I see from them is just like, like a connectedness where like. It sounds corny, but like you finish each other's sentences, like you know what you're thinking, like uh -huh. you know his aunt is da 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 da, so you're making her a cake or something. Like I want to be so close that your mom treats me like her daughter. Like we're going to get our nails done, we're going, you know, uh -huh. to get our hair done, like all types of like little stuff like that. Like so, I feel so included to have another family. Like, like yo, what? My yeah, like you calling and telling me about Aunt Shirley, but Aunt Shirley called me last night to tell me what happened. Like, <laughs> I'm already here with it. Like, <laughs> like that's how I, that's how I feel it is. That's how I, like, I want to be with my friends and how I want to be with someone else. And I've come to notice, like, that can be very dangerous if it's not a right relationship because you so connected to somebody that say they leave you and you just left, like, empty. Like, yes. but I don't want to look at it like that because you don't want to, put something, make something you want to be so beautiful and so positive to be negative already. I'm just going to be optimistic about it. Like, if it don't happen now, it happened. Like, I'm just turning 20. Like, I'm probably the youngest person in this room. Like, I'm just turning 20. Like, I'll be fine. Like, it'll happen. Like, and if it don't, like, I just have, like, I know I'll be fine. It's like, even if it don't. Yeah. Yeah. What I think my, what I want my love to be is uh, unconditional acceptance. Um, what else? just understanding and just compassion. Mm -hmm. Like, love me because you want to love me, not because you want me to feel love. It's because you really want to do it. Mm -hmm. Like, have you ever laid on the beach and like the sun is on you, but you get that breeze from the ocean? Yeah. Yeah. That's how I want my relationship to feel. Mm -hmm. And I know it might not always be that way, but as long as we can get back to that feeling exactly. is all that matters. Mm -hmm. Like, I've learned love in so many different ways from seeing it from my mom and my dad literally fist fight and, you know, God rest his soul, because he passed two years ago. Um, you know, I see my mom take care of a lot of men and it kind of confused me as like, is love taking care of someone or is that just, is that really what love is? Like, I see my mom take care of men, just take care of them, do things for them because she loves them, but I've never seen it reciprocated. I feel like she was more so just taking on an additional kid at this point. Yeah. And what I want my relationship to be is we take care of each other, not physically or financially, but emotionally, mentally. I want you to be there for where I lack yes. and vice versa. Okay. I want us to be able to grow together while still learning about this world because there's so many parts of this world that we don't know. Yeah. And I want us to uncover that together. Right. But I feel that the problem is that People are so used to like, we live in a very technology era, quick, fast results. That is not for them these days. So the people that I come encounter with, like, 
I, I don't take them serious because I know that they're looking for that quick, fast results. And that kind of love that I need and that I want and aspire to have yeah. is going to take the time. Yeah. time. Yeah. So until then, I'm loving myself. And I mm-hmm. it took me so long to get where I am. Mm-hmm. And um, to be yes. around my family. And it took me a long time to be with my family like that because I just estranged myself from them. So the fact that I have my family and my friends who are my family... And like just loving what I do, I'm content with being alone mm. because I'm afraid of settling for less. Yes. Mm. Yes. So that's where I'm at. I feel like ideally, I don't know, I keep trying to like think of the question they answer in my head, but as far as I the type of ideal love that I want, I just wanna be able to, you know, like like you've all been saying, like I wanna be able to grow with you and that's always my thing so that's why when you know this guy he hit me with the oh you know this is good but i wish i could just save this for later like put it later i feel like that's the problem a lot of guys mm-hmm. have now they're always thinking in the back of their head oh later like mm-hmm. later i'll get to that later and it's just like people don't get to that point but it just happening you yeah. know like you have mm-hmm. to really go through things and yeah progress with people grow with people and i don't i don't know but ideally I just want to be able to grow with a person and really like when we get to that point it's like like we're here like you know me like the back of my hand like we don't even we don't even have to like speak to really mm-hmm. communicate and know like where we're at but I, I, yeah so ideally yeah that is what i want i like to piggyback off when you were saying it was like to wait till later i tell them you're not going to put this pussy on layaway Everybody will know that it's in the store with prices on it. They will figure out whether they want to purchase it. They will touch the cloth. They will see. You will not have it in the back and put $2 on it every couple days, 30 days, 60 days. Want to put a couple dollars on whatever. No, bro. It's going to be in the store. Readily available on the way. It might be on the mannequin in the front window. It is not about to be in the back waiting for you to pay all. What? This is not Renaissance. We will not do that, young man. (laughs) 